Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter but not the spirit of a request. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, customer wanted a discount but did not receive it. The second story, you are not the account holder, we can't help you. The third story, vice president wanted to take my breakfast. Today's first story is, you want a big discount on this medication that can't be found anywhere or else you're going somewhere else? Okay, good luck finding it. For context, I work in a pharmacy in Canada, and the way pharmacies make money is to charge a slight markup, which varies on a medication, and also add a professional dispensing fee, which can vary store to store, but most are 9 to $10 per medication. Of course, people ask for discounts all the time because of this variation. I try to work with people as best as I can especially someone who takes multiple medications very frequently. I do my best to charge them a reasonable amount because I know these fees can be hefty and medication is important. Often people ask to match Costco's pharmacy price, which is 1-2% to markup and a $3.99 fee. Anyone in the industry knows that this is basically ridiculous and Costco's not making any money from their pharmacy. Their pricing is to get people in store to pick up other items on the way. In addition, finding parking, navigating the aisles and hordes of people, and having to wait a very long time before you get your prescription usually deters a lot of people from going. So a new lady, M, whom I've never met, comes into my pharmacy with a prescription for a medication. Let's call it X. It's an older medication that's been phased out over several months because there were other similar medications introduced that cost significantly less, so demand dropped and the company stopped producing it. However, there are a few people who swear by it and still want drug X because it worked better than its alternatives for them. When these patients on Drug X heard the drug manufacturer was stopping production, many people got prescriptions for months and years and bought out basically every bottle. So all the major stores had zero stock left over. I just so happened to have a few bottles in stock that were good for another five years, likely the final batch made. So I tell M that she's in luck and that I happen to have it in stock. She asks me how much and I gave her our standard price, which has a 10% markup on the cost and $12.99. She scoffs at me and tells me, I better match Costco or she'd never come back. I said, look, I'm sorry, if you were taking other medications frequently, I could work with you and help reduce the fees, but I can maybe bring it down a few bucks at the most, since it's just a one-time pickup. She literally starts screaming that she'll give us the worst reviews, etc., how I'm being completely disrespectful and she'll never do business with me again. I knew this medication was likely not available anywhere, so I stick to my guns. I told her again, I'm sorry, but I couldn't match Costco. We'd basically be making no money if I did. She asks for her prescription back, literally snatches it from my hand, calls me rude and that I had the worst customer service ever and I just lost a ton of business and storms out. Over the next few hours, I received four calls from four separate Costco pharmacies asking me if I could provide a source of where I bought Drug X from because their wholesalers don't have it and they have a patient who claims I had it in stock. Poor employees were just trying to help this lady and of course, I told them it was honestly just extra stock and I had the same wholesalers as them. They all thanked me and went back to dealing with this lady. She was clearly shopping around for it. As luck would have it, a very frequent patient of mine came in and had a prescription for Drug X for her son that he's been looking everywhere for. He had tried every pharmacy in the area and had his mom bring it to me. I filled it for her and she happily paid the full price and was so thankful and even brought me some baked treats the following week. Two days later, as I'm at work, I see M come into the store not making eye contact. She gave me the same prescription, now crumpled up and stained, after likely being handled by several other pharmacies. She says, all right, whatever, I'll pay your extra ridiculous fee. Thought I'd give you some business after reconsidering. At this point, there were three others waiting, so I told her to have a seat and wait, because technically, the prescription still has to follow the workflow, which involves an electronic stock check, even though I know we don't have it. I'd usually give people a heads up if I knew in advance to avoid waiting, but she can wait. 25 minutes go by and it's her turn. I call her name to the counter and with a pretty big smirk, I said, Unfortunately, ma'am, we've completely run out of drug X and we have no way of obtaining it at this time. You'll have to try another pharmacy. She interrupted and said, But you just had it two days ago. I was just here. I informed her that another patient had depleted our final stock after she insisted on going elsewhere. She hung her head down, meekly took her prescription back and went out the door without a peep, dragging her feet the whole way. She had wasted at least 4-5 to five hours going to pharmacies for what basically amounted to $14 difference and in the end she didn't get her way. Oh, it felt so good. The next story is, 
Sorry, you aren't the account holder. Background. I got divorced a few years ago and not long after my ex moved to a different country. We still had a joint account. I know it should have been cancelled but it was overlooked and the only transaction still happening on it was for a home alarm. We were three years in on a five-year contract and the fee was approximately $75 a month. The joint account also had a $1,000 overdraft. I started preparing to sell my home and called the alarm company to see about cancelling my account. If you've tried to cancel an alarm contract, you know how impossible they make it and how much of an A-hat they can be. Anyway, me equals me, AC equals alarm company. Me, I'm selling my home and would like to cancel my alarm. AC, can you give me the username and password? Me, gives the username and password. AC, I'm sorry but that's not correct. Me, I have the contract in front of me and that's what it says on the contract. AC, sorry but that's not correct, it must have been changed. Me, okay, let's change it. AC, sorry sir, you're not the account holder. You need the account holder to change the password and to authorize any changes to the account. Me, looks closer at the contract. It looks like my ex signed the contract, but we're divorced and she's moved out of the country. AC, I'm sorry sir, but without her authorization, we can't make any changes to the account. Me, things are not amicable between us. She will not call you to make any changes. AC, I'm sorry sir, but we can't help you. Me, I would really like to get this taken care of. AC, sorry, we can't help without the account holder's authorization. Me, I can't get that. AC, then there's nothing we can do. Me, you need to send someone to collect your alarm and various sensors then, as I'll no longer be paying the bill. AC, sir, that's not the way this works. You're contractually obligated for the full term of the contract, and the equipment is yours to keep. Me, I'll no longer be paying the bill. AC, oh, in that case, we'll send this to collections and ruin your credit score. Me, hmm, I'm pretty sure you said I'm not the account holder, and according to the contract I have in front of me, the contract is between you and my ex so I'm done paying her bill. AC, sir, you can't do that. That's not ethical. Me, you've told me that according to your rules you can't work with me, so I'm just gonna follow your rules. The next day I head into my bank and try to cancel the direct debit transaction. I'm informed that I can't cancel it. Only the originator of the direct debit can cancel it, and with the originator being the alarm company, that's not likely. I live in Canada and those are the rules, at least according to my bank. They tell me I can manually cancel a transaction, but I have to come into the branch to do it, and I have to do it every month. For three months I do this, but it's a real pain, as I work 45 minutes out of town, and my work day happens to be the same as bank hours, so a special trip is needed, and time off work to do this. After three months, I went back to the bank, and asked if there's any other way to sort this out. I explained the situation with the alarm company, and how they won't work with me, as I'm not the account holder, and how I can't get the account holder to participate. They empathize, but sorry, we can't help. Me equals me. BK equals bank. Me, I'd like to close the account then. BK, sorry, it requires both signatures to close the account due to the way it was set up. Me, I can't get the other signature. BK, we won't be able to close the account then. Me, I've been transferring money each month to cover this alarm fee and I won't be doing that anymore, so we need to close this account so it doesn't incur overdraft fees and charges. BK, we can't close the account or stop the direct debit. Me, can I take myself off the account? BK, yes, you can remove yourself from the account. Me, okay, let's do that. Me, do I have any liability on this account anymore? BK, no, you're no longer an account holder. Me, you do realize that by me no longer transferring money into this account, the alarm fee will keep coming out each month and run the overdraft up. BK, that's okay, we'll deal with it. 10 months later, I get a call from the bank. My number was still listed as the contact number. Sir, you have an overdrawn account to the tune of $1,300 and change due to the fees overdraft charges and interest. I ask who the account holder is. They name my ex. I say then this isn't my problem. The response is you were an account holder on this account. I describe the entire problem and they respond with you need to pay this. I'm sorry I say. I tried everything to reconcile this with my branch and they did not want to work with me and as I'm not the account holder it's no longer my problem. The bank then responded well who's going to pay this overdue balance? I responded with you'll need to talk to the account holder. The bank responds with, sir, that's not very ethical. You told me that your ex is no longer in the country. My response before I hung up was, I tried to work with you, but your rules would not allow it, so I'm simply following your rules. The last story is, I also pulled an MC on travel expense compliance. I had an MC over expense reports. After the universally loved VP that hired me left to retire, we replaced with a new VP, whose reputation as ineffective, 
micromanaging, moral crusading a-hole filled his spot, and he became the new signer on my expense reports. While I'm known for eschewing food in the morning, when I'm working, and just having one rosy-colored bovine brand energy drink in its place, had been expensing the approximate $2 cost of it at breakfast for years up to this point. No problem. In fact, it was pointed out that due to that and other things, I had some of the lowest travel expenses in the company. Well, new VP gets my first report, signs it and sends it back, with a note saying to come see him sometime today. I show up and the first thing out of his mouth is, Nurk, the days of the company subsidizing your energy drink habit are over. That expense report I signed was the last one. Well, I pleaded my case and stated it was no different and still cheaper than the fancy coffee drinks others expensed, and overall it saved money. Well, per the VP, he stated, your addiction is a lifestyle choice and I'm not paying for it. So I just asked him to please send me an email to make it official, and I would tow the line. I already knew what I was going to do, and you can probably guess. I still had my energy drinks for breakfast. It just had a more elaborate way to obtain it. Simply put, I would pull into the first breakfast place every morning and find someone who would allow me to pay their bill for $2.50 in return, and I had a nice max per meal rate, so I made sure to see if they wanted more to eat or something to go. As you can imagine, it was not hard to find folks to agree to fork over $2.50 in exchange for around $25 meal. I did this without fail every day I was on the road. As you can imagine, my ERs took a 180 and showed a dramatic spike in my travel costs. And the CFO's office asked my VP what's up. And because he's a smug idiot, he says, I've had problems with his expenses before and I get scheduled for a corrective meeting. I could not wait. Meetings like these had all the top executives at them, but most importantly the CFO and sometimes the CEO. Well, when I walked in, I could not stop grinning to see it was all hands on deck, including the CEO. I sat down, heard what my VP had to say, and HR had to say, and was asked if I understood the travel policy. I smiled even more now, as I realized no one in that room looked at any details, just the bottom line that I spent more money. Found out later it was the VP's task to do that. He did not. I can only guess he thought I would walk in, take my licks and then be sent out. When it was my turn to speak, I stated I've always followed the policy, and I was still within expense limits, and reminded them in quarters past I had some of the lowest ERs in the company. I then said, but there's one change I was directed to make that may explain all this. I then locked eyes with my VP, and he was as pale as a ghost, and had an expression of grimacing on his face, I like to call shark concern. I then pulled out a few copies of the email my VP had sent me, directing me to stop spending around $2 for breakfast energy drinks, and only legitimate breakfast could now be included. The silence in the room was only broken by the CEO saying, thank you Nurk, this is very helpful, and he dismissed me from the meeting. Two hours later my VP sends out an email to our group, stating that coffee or energy drinks were an acceptable item to be included in expense reports. After that, he avoided me for a month. I got to get him one more time on another stupid MC issue that he did not think through. He didn't even last a year. Thank you for listening. Have a good one.